Welcome everyone to Beyond the Finish Line, my new series where I review the latest weekly challenges, show which cars I used, and offer you potential cars to use yourself to complete the challenges. Typically I like to use cars I haven't driven before or haven't driven much, unless the challenge calls for a specific car. I'll also show what changes I made to any car in order to make the race more challenging for myself. And also show you the strategy I used for the fifth race, which has always been a race with tire wear and fuel consumption, and can be the most challenging of the bunch. Now I'll quickly go through each race and showcase any highlights and blunders I may have had, and show what it took for me to get the win. And before we start, please like, comment and subscribe. A simple click for you is a big help to the channel and is appreciated more than I can express. Thank you. For February week 2, we have a decent lineup with a special event race in the Radical, which is always a fun car to drive. Nothing too crazy, but a good bunch nonetheless. First race is the Japanese FF Challenge 450 at the high speed ring. And for this one, I chose to drive the Toyota Aqua, a car I didn't even know I had in the garage, but I saw it and figured, let's try it out. This car is fully stock, and because it's different from what I would have chose for this race, made it pretty cool to drive. Only two laps in this race, and while lacking in power, I was able to make passes on certain turns that would eventually get me in the lead, but without any upgrades I wasn't too sure how this car would handle taking the turns faster than the AI. Again on this same turn, I was able to get the lead on the final lap, and the speed I carried out the exit kept me ahead of P2 on the final stretch to the line, but I wasn't 100% sure that he wouldn't catch up before the finish. But luckily he didn't and I was able to get the win in the underpowered aqua, which I honestly didn't have confidence in but went with it anyway. Second race is the Sylvia Sisters at Willow Springs, and I'm driving the 1996 Nissan 180X Type X, and I didn't have to adjust the power of this car, because I hadn't bought any upgrades prior to this race. This is what I did end up buying just for this race. The sports air filter, muffler, and brake pads, with the first stage weight reduction. It didn't make me faster than the AI. But as usual, you can get them on the turns and gain positions, and with three laps, there was ample time to get into the lead. About halfway through the second lap, I was able to get into P5 and get behind the leaders, but P1 did seem like he was pulling away a bit, so I knew I might not catch him until the final lap. I started the third in P2 with P1 having a pretty big lead, and I didn't catch up to him until later in the lap, which was about halfway through. I got by him here taking the inside, but a little further up, I missed the turn and lost control and went for a ride, and I thought I would lose the lead, but luckily managed to hold on to it. And that secured the win in the 180X, thankfully, with P2 right on my tail though. Third race is the special event in the Radical, four laps at the Nürburgring GP, and for this race I made adjustments to the power to make it challenging. I lowered the ECU and power restrictor and added weight. Starting the second lap, I was in P8 and right in the mix with the AI. They had slightly a little more power than me, but wasn't enough to leave me behind. Here in the third, I made it up to P4 and right on the tail of the leaders, and to start the fourth, I was right behind P1 and waiting for my chance to take the lead. And I managed to do just that, a little further ahead, on the first turn, by taking a tight inside line. And I was able to keep the lead through the rest of the final lap with some decent distance on P2 and walk away with the victory. Fourth race is the American Clubman Cup 700, five laps at Trial Mountain. I chose to drive the 2002 Dodge Viper GTS, and for this one, I lowered the power, but also replaced the higher end upgrades with the sport upgrades. Even with all those changes, the Viper still had some decent power, as I found myself in P4 here in the second lap trying to catch up to the top three. Coming to the end of the third lap, I made a move for P2 and got a little dirty bump from P3 as I took the position. In the fourth, I managed to get by P1 for the lead, but on the straight, the power he has over me showed.
He easily overtook me to regain the lead and I was a little worried that it would happen in the final lap and cost me the race. But on the very next turn, I was able to get by him taking a tight inside line, including a little bump, and back into P1. And it was clear sailing to the finish as I managed to put some really good distance on P2 and not have to worry about him passing me with his extra power. The final race of February week 2 is the World Touring Car 900, 10 laps at Autopolis, with tire wear and fuel consumption, and for this race I'm driving the Group 2 Lexus RC F GT500. No changes made to the car for this race, I just have the standard upgrades you can buy for any of the Group Class cars, the fully customizable ECU and racing transmission, and the high RPM turbocharger. I moved up the field steadily bit by bit the first few laps, and by the end of the fifth when I was ready to pit, I was all the way up to P5. I exited the pit all the way back in P18, but majority of the field still had to pit, so I'll get back a bunch of positions in the next couple laps, and also for this race you can leave your fuel map at 1. Here in the eighth is when I got back into P5, but the top of the field had a huge lead on me, so them pitting would be the only way to catch up to them. And that's exactly how I got into P3 starting the ninth lap. P2 was just ahead of me, but P1 had a tremendous lead on all of us, but he had yet to pit. I got P2 in the latter part of the ninth lap, but P1 still had that huge lead, so I wasn't sure if I would catch him before he exited the pit. Starting the final lap, he was exiting the pit, and I was able to fly past him for the lead, and I managed to keep it for the full lap. And that brings us to the end of the race and the end of the weekly challenges. First time driving this Lexus and it was a good challenge to end week 2. This was a cool week of races, nothing spectacular, and no real highlights on my part. Each race ended up being pretty straightforward, without any real battling against the AI. The first race as always is the throwaway race, but I got to use the Aqua, which I didn't even know existed to be honest, but it was fun to drive. Race 2 in the 180SX was also fun because I've never used it before, and lowering the power on it made it a closer race than I expected, not getting the lead till the final lap. Race 3, the special event in the Radical, was a good race with lowering the power and having just slightly less power than the AI, kept it close for majority of the race until the fourth lap, and then it was clear sailing. The fourth race in the Viper was fun, never used it for a race before that, had some close moments with the leaders, but nothing crazy, even with less power, I managed to gap P2 significantly by the end of the race. The final race was the most challenging of the bunch, first time driving the Lexus and it actually took me three attempts before I won the race, and in that third race, it still wasn't easy, but much easier than my failed attempts. It was a good week of races, but I didn't have any real good highlight moments that made for some crazy racing. Even with the changes I made to certain cars, I had two pretty close races in the Aqua and the 180SX. And even though I had to do the final race three times, by the last attempt, I had pretty much the entire final lap in the lead and no issues, so I maybe could have played around with the power to make it a bit more challenging. A good week with some mediocre races on my part that had no excitement. Please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.